It's been suggested that we simply hang a bag of $10,000 over the ship's side and say to the pirates, take that and go away. subjected to a piratical attack, you have to give in. I know it's against the tradition of repelling borders, but if you fought, used force against the pirates, they will use greater force against you. There were so many piratical attacks uh, in the, uh, the Malacca Straits, the Singapore Straits in 1992, that we thought something should be done about it. And we arranged a, a series of meetings in Kuala Lumpur between police and industry. As a result of those meetings, we decided to set up a regional piracy centre. I mean, on a recent occasion, uh, members of a, of a fishing uh, trawler were simply thrown overboard and nine people lost their lives. With regard to firearms, if you give firearms to, to members of the crew and they're not psychologically trained and equipped to, to handle firearms, and if they're not prepared to shoot to kill, then it's, it's useless to give them the weapons. And I, I, I feel uh, a sense of revulsion about it because uh, Pirates uh, attack ships, leaving the ships perhaps without navigation. They threaten members of the crew, sometimes with revolvers in their mouths. And the traumatic effect on members of the crew is beyond belief. And I have met many, many seamen who will never ever go back to sea again because they have been subjected to a piratical attack. We've recorded something over 40 ships that have disappeared in the last few years. Recently, uh, the gang uh, took a cargo of plywood destined for America, valued over $5 million, into a port in China. Now, they never declared the vessel into the port, the cargo was never recorded as coming to the port, and it's going to be very, very difficult to get that cargo back.
Here we have organized criminals in the Far East. Overseas Chinese operating out of Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Thailand simply being able to order ships to be stolen to order. You can go to a hotel in Manila, overlooking the bay, and simply say, steal that ship. And for $350,000 or thereabouts, they will steal that ship. If you want the crew on board, they will leave the crew on board. If you don't want the crew on board, they will simply throw them overboard, and you have a ship. I have my own ship taken over by the pirates here, here right here at uh, Manila Bay. At about 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, some people boarded the ship and then they say they are the policemen because there are some complaint uh, from uh, some girls and they say that they wanted to see all the officers because there is complaint that they rape uh, a girl. They identified themselves as police officers and they wanted everybody to be uh, in the uh, mess hall so that they could identify who the people are. When everybody was already at the uh, salon, they were tied up by these uh, supposedly police uh, officers. And then they just left uh, lifted the anchor and sailed away uh, with the, the crew. With a ship like this, you can get a temporary registration for. You can go to an office uh, in many of these countries and simply get a a false registration. This false registration, you give it a false ownership, a false name, a false description, a false call sign, and you create what we call a phantom ship. A ship which can simply go in, pick up a cargo, and disappear with that cargo. The uh, Stares was uh, discharging some cargo in the port of San Fernando La Union in the northern Philippines when she was intercepted by the Criminal Investigation Service which proved that the vessel was the silver med that was uh, hijacked. You could see now the uh, original name of the silver med rusting and it is going out of the embossed uh, name of the uh, Star Ace. And it doesn't make sense in this world, uh, compared with the aviation industry, that a ship can be simply stolen to order, falsely registered, and then simply disappear. Uh, and this happens all too frequently by this organized gang. Well, according to my crew, they are all Filipino uh, people. And uh, the head of this uh, team that uh, took over the uh, ship was a certain uh, Captain Emilio uh, Chanco. He was the main architect of stealing ships to order. He was the man that you contacted that would simply go out and do this. Uh, and they made a mistake. He and, I believe, his brother stole a ship, the Tabengoa, which is an oil cargo owned by the Philippine government. As a result of that, the Philippine government got very annoyed and issued a shoot-to-kill policy in respect of their pirates. 
and eventually Chenko was, was arrested. The arrest officer telling me that I was involved in a case of piracy. But uh, for me, they arrest me, they hostage me, the one, the one who arrest me, that they're just looking for my brother. Now I'm here for not telling my brother is serving the sentence of life. Around 5 a.m. in the morning, one officer, the, he came to my uh, dorm and he told me that my brother was shot and he was dead already. And he asked me to, uh, to visit him at the morgue to see it. But I didn't see the wounds on his body. I just I just look at his face. There are skeptics uh, who feel that uh, perhaps uh, his death was, was useful to the people out there. There are also people that believe that he bought his way out of prison. I don't know what the truth is. I believe he's dead uh, and, and uh, I have to accept the explanation given by the authorities. My brother, before he died, he just exposed something, you know, about the case. He named names. Even the government official. Now I don't know what's going to happen to me next. That's why I'm afraid to myself, too. Maybe my brother and the name in name, they all know each other, but me, no way. I don't know them. I just I'm here and I tell my brother he is. I hope they understand that. Roger,留意附近所有船隻的情況 Okay, so. 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 Okay,
咩啊？咩啊？打啦！啊，有時見到喺喺華南外嗰度有見到啲咧。係嘅。得啦，得啦，得啦。好，得啦，得。系，你讲唔讲？水柜嘅，系啊，睇过啦，睇过啦。In the last six months, um, our crews have had to use their weapons twice. Um, once an incident where one of my men was being attacked, having boarded a fast boat. As the boat was making away, he was attacked by the crew with knives. He used his pistol, quite rightly under the circumstances. Nobody was killed, but the crew made a sensible decision to surrender. takes place in China waters, it is their business and therefore it can only be dealt with politically. We would not want to see the Royal Navy careering into any nation's private waters, charging around, waving the white ensign. That's not our job, nor is it the job of any Navy. Now the solution to the problem of piracy lies with national governments. They proved, in the case of the Malacca Strait, Straits of Singapore, the Indonesian government, that they could go out and arrest a number of pirates, and, and uh, there hasn't been an attack since they did this. From the moment the report is received, we've got to get out of Hong Kong waters, transit Chinese waters, which is no problem, then go to the position of the reported incident. Now that takes time. So what we would first of all do is send a helicopter along to look at the situation, try and gain photographic evidence if we can, and then we know we've got a situation that's actually to be dealt with. But it depends on distance. The other alternative is for the government to assess their priorities and to put the Royal Navy cruising up and down international waters, just flogging up and down, up and down, looking for a pirate we're more likely to meet Peter Pan. <laughs>